Hello, and welcome to Gear Grotto. In this episode, I'll give you a tour of the HD2 Mix Bus Enhancer from Blackbox Analog Design. I'm also going to explain how adding harmonic overtones can make your mix sound bigger and better. The HD2 is a tube stereo unit that adds harmonic overtones to your mix. It can be used in a mastering setup as well, useful for spicing up a mix that needs a bit of character. Like other harmonic enhancers, it achieves its sound by adding distortion. Applied moderately, this distortion has a pleasant effect, which adds details and stereo width. With the HD2, you can raise not just the overall harmonics, but blend in dedicated low, flat or high frequency saturation as well. This offers great flexibility in shaping the tone of your mix. Not all types of distortion work equally well. Overloading a transistor-based analog unit or using a plug-in won't necessarily yield the same satisfying effect. In plug-ins, so-called aliasing can cause unwanted side effects. Due to limitations in the frequency bandwidth of the digital processing, high frequencies are folded back at lower frequencies that aren't musically meaningful. But the most important factor is which order of harmonics the enhancer predominantly increases. Tubes on one hand and transistor designs and plugins on the other hand tend to be different in that aspect. First, let's look at the concept of harmonic overtones. A pure sine tone has no overtones. Here is one playing at 110 Hz. The bass note is the first harmonic, mostly referred to as the fundamental. By applying the HD2 you can hear and see how harmonic overtones are created based on the fundamental. Overtones that are even number multiples of the fundamental are called even order harmonics. For example, if we multiply 110 Hz by 2, we get the second harmonic at 220 Hz the fourth harmonic at 440 Hz, and so on. Notice how especially the second harmonic at 220 Hz is increased by the HD2, and this constitutes an octave interval. This octave fattens up the sound, much like playing an octave on a piano emphasizes the lower note as well. Here is a mix enhancer plugin on the same 110 Hz sine tone. Compared to the previous example, we instead have a loud third harmonic at 330 Hz. The third is an odd order harmonic. In this case, 110 Hz multiplied by the number 3. The next odd harmonic is at 550 Hz, then 770, and so on. Odd harmonics tend to sound more edgy and perhaps less natural. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it depends on what you're looking for. Try doing this test with different saturation plugins and see if you can find one that does nice even order harmonics. Tube and transistor designs can both produce odd and even harmonics at the same time. The difference lies in the balance between the two types. Tube based units generally give more prominence to the even harmonics, while transistor based units generally give more prominence to the odd harmonics. Let's look at the signal flow. The HD2 offers three different kinds of tube saturation, or four if you count the alternative tube in the parallel chain. Finally, you have the subtle but inherent harmonics from the cinematic output transformers. Using the parallel chain, you can blend in a flat or frequency shaped tube signal back into the pentodes. The pentode and triode tubes have different characteristics, and a variety of even and odd harmonics can be obtained by pushing them in different measures. The icing on the cake is the all-tube airlift button, which boosts high frequencies from around 10 kHz. Here are some quick examples of the HD2. This mix could do with a bit of overdrive. Blending in a flat parallel signal further increases saturation. The alternative tubes imbues a more mid-rangey sound, which pulls up certain elements.
In this next example, I'll do fairly gentle overall saturation, but boost the low end in the parallel chain. The kick and bass appear louder, but also cut through the mix due to the increase in overtones. The airlift pulls up the top and hi-hats. If you push the HD to each stage of the circuit can begin to compress the dynamics of the signal. You can do this on purpose to inflate the average or RMS level of the signal, although the price is progressively noticeable distortion. In a mix or stem situation, this type of creative compression can work well. For mastering, I consider the HD2 more of a versatile color box than a magic bullet for obtaining loudness. You can insert the HD2 anywhere in your chain, but in a mastering setup, it's a good idea to have your overall frequency balance and dynamics in place first. On the other hand, inserting the HD2 earlier in the chain can be useful for disproportionately affecting loud dynamic sounds in the mix. This is true for most harmonic enhancers. The more controlled your signal is before hitting the enhancer, the more the enhancer relatively works on the body of the signal. The black box analog design HD2 is a 3 unit box built like a tank and it looks imposing. The HD2 offers a lot of useful workflow features. There is a true bypass button which shorts the input XLRs to the output XLRs. There is a large LED meter which offers both a fast peak meter and a slower VU style reading. In addition to the master on off switch on the back of the unit, there is an on off standby radio switch on the front. In the convenient standby mode, the HD2 sends power to the tube heaters. Tube units, especially when you push them, can drift slightly in the left-right channels. Robert Wainscott, one of the two guys behind Blackbox, said that tubes are like dating the most beautiful woman in the world, who also just happens to be crazy. Luckily for us, the HD2 is matched and calibrated throughout, better so than most other tube gear I've used. There are multiple internal trimming points inside the unit. The only thing I trimmed was the airlift to make it more suitable for mastering. In the second revision, Blackbox introduced a balanced trim pot on the front panel to ease fractional dB trimming. All analog gear, especially tubes and transformers, will raise the noise floor in your system. With pentode and triode set to 12 o'clock and output attenuation all the way up, I measured the RMS noise floor at minus 83 dBFS, including the full round trip. There is a very slight hum which shouldn't pose a problem. The manual is thorough and offers some good starting tips, though it doesn't give an explanation for what the name HD2 actually stands for. My guess is that HD stands for Holy Grail of Mix Boss Processing. If you're looking for an easy and flexible way of adding some vibe to your mix, the HD2 is an excellent choice. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to get more videos like this in the future.